Hi everyone. In this practice, you will implement the client failover on SQL Plus and test its functionality. You will work on a copy of the appliances that you created in practice number 8, enabling fast start failover. Just as a reminder, the data guard configuration that you created in practice 8 was a physical standby database controlled by the broker and the fast start failover is enabled. In high level, in this practice, you will create database services, configure the TNS client failover, and test the client failover functionality. To prepare for this practice, copy the folder that contains the appliances that you created in practice 8. Give the new folder the name Practice 10 Client Failover. As always, open the appliances in VirtualBox, start them, and start their databases. And as always, open two PuTTY sessions connected to each database. When we defined the standby database in the Oracle Restart, it has been configured to get started in mount mode by default. You need to change that and configure it to start in open mode. When our standby database is started in open mode and you start its apply process, the real-time query option will automatically be enabled. Start the redo apply. Start the observer in the standby machine, SRV2. Check on the broker configuration health. Make sure the real-time query is enabled. Don't worry when you see this error. Try the command again in a few seconds and you should be alright. As you can see, the error has gone. Start monitoring sessions to the alert log files and the broker log file. I already did that in my case. We have now two databases running in our data guard configuration. One is a primary database and the other one is a standby database. We have the broker configured and the FSFO is enabled. All the requirements for the automatic client failover are there. You will configure the SQL Plus for automatic client failover. Create a database service of the primary and standby databases. Observe that the role is set to primary to each database. Verify that the services have been created in the databases.
I will use the SQL Plus that is installed locally in my Windows hosting machine. I have Oracle Client installed in it and would like to use it as a client for testing. If you don't have Oracle installed in your hosting machine, you can use the SQL Plus utility in SRV2 appliance as a client. Copy the TNS settings below into the TNS names or a file of the client. Try connecting to the created service from the client. In the client side, set the TCB outbound timeout in the sqlnet.ora file. Verify which database the client is connected to. The client is connected to the current primary database, Aura DB. We are actually done with enabling the automatic client failover. We can now test our configuration. Run the select statement as shown in the practice document. This statement is a Cartesian product query, and it will take a few minutes to finish. The select statement is still running in the client session. Try now aborting the primary database. As you see, the client session is hanging, waiting for the database failover. After a few seconds, the broker will fail over to the standby database and AuraDB underscore S2 becomes the new primary database. You will observe that the select statement is now fetching its rows. Eventually, all the rows will be retrieved. As you see, the client did not get disconnected by the primary database failure. Retrieve the database instance name that the client is connected to. The client is now connected to the new primary database, AuraDB S2. Start up the primary database and wait till the observer automatically reinstates the old primary database. the broker has automatically reinstated the old primary database. Switch over to AuraDB database so that it becomes back again the primary database of our configuration. Check the instance name again in the client session.
the client has automatically reconnected to AuraDB database in the background. To the user point of view, his session has not been interrupted. In conclusion, configuring an automatic client failover for an OCI application is quite easy. When the database is failed over or switched over, the client sessions will automatically get connected to the new primary database. This has been achieved by the tight integration between the broker and the TNS configuration in the client side. Thanks for joining my practice session. See you in the next lecture.